Stuff that we actually can do, that is interesting, it really is. But stuff that we can actually do some things with. Specifically, we're going to get into some curve sketching, which I know it doesn't sound really cool because you can kind of do it on a calculator, but this will lead you to understand why curves are the way they are and why they're shaped the way they're shaped. A calculator won't let you do that. So we're going to start section 3.3. Tell you something about the first derivative test. Some of you are already signed because you just realized we finished two sections, right? Yeah. That's our third section, and it's going to go very fast. You don't have to throw your calculator down in anger, all right? You don't have to do that. Uh, recall something for me. We just did this, like, well, on the video, it seems like only 20 minutes ago, but actually it was on Wednesday. Um, what does this mean? First derivative. Okay, it's the first derivative and it's positive. Grand and Jeremy's positive. You're both right. What's it mean? No. Oh, no. I burned your paper for that. Hand you back your staple. It has nothing to do with concavity. Nothing to do with concavity. At all. First derivative has to do with the slope, or that's the rate of change of your line. So it would tell you increasing or decreasing. That's what it would tell you. So those of you who said increasing and decreasing, you're right. Concavity, no. That's second derivative. Okay. Second derivative tells you how the slope is changing. So you need the second derivative to do that. Uh, no, that says the slope is positive. If slope is positive, you're like this, right? What's your line doing, going up or down? Increasing. This says increasing. Understand? Refresh your memory on 3.1 if this is like, oh my, the first part of 3.1. What's that mean? Decreasing. Definitely decreasing. Slope is negative. First derivative is negative. Slope is negative. Decreasing. Aha. What's this mean? Constant, that would be a horizontal tangent, that would be finding critical numbers. Constant or critical numbers, or critical points if you prefer. I think they switch to critical numbers because technically x equals a value isn't quite a point, is it? It's just a number. Now, I'm going to tell you how to find relative extreme. You think you already know because you know what critical numbers are, but I'm going to give you a nice graphic. It's a, you have all the information. Okay, I'm not going to teach you anything really new. You have it all up here. You have it on your on your notes. What I'm going to tell you is how to do it properly. I'm going to give you a graphic organizer so that's a little bit easier for you. Would you like that? Here and do this on your homework. This is how I want you to do it. How to find a board. <laughs> Oops. <laughs> That I cannot. <laughs> Girlfriend watching this? <laughs> Kidding. <laughs> she hates math, so I'm in luck. It's <laughs> horrible. How to find relative extrema. Here is what you're going to do. You are going to do something called the first derivative test. That's what this is, is to do. So, first derivative test says. First derivative test. Number one, take the first derivative. <laughs> We're so original in mathematics. Take the first derivative. That has to do with the first derivative test. Number two, set it equal to zero for your critical numbers. Number three, 
you're going to make what I like to call the first derivative table. Here's what the first derivative, ta derivative table looks like. You draw a number line. This is a number line. It's just a, it's a way to organize your graph, okay? Because ultimately, just to give you like an advanced organizer, we're going to be graphing functions. So this is the first part in graphing your functions. It's just organizing it for you, so this is going to be a graph. What goes on the top of your, your little graph here is your first derivative represented by your critical numbers. So you put your critical number number one, critical number number two, and so on until you run out of critical numbers. They have to be in order. So critical number, critical number, <coughs> critical number. However many you get. There might be zero, there might be one, there might be a dozen of them. Doubtfully a dozen. So take the first derivative, no problem. Set equal to zero, we've done that already. We found critical points, that was 3.1. Make that table, that's something new, but it's not very hard to do. Then what we're gonna do for our table, set number four. I'm just redrawing here. Listen. You know that at this point, and this point, and however many I have, your first derivative will be zero, right? Yes. And that's telling you you have a horizontal tangent. So before that, note that you're going to either be increasing or decreasing, right? After that, you're going to be either increasing or decreasing. After that, you're going to be either, you are either going to be increasing or decreasing here, and increasing or decreasing here, and increasing or decreasing here. If you weren't, then it would have shown up. You follow me? It would have been there. It would have been a critical number. It would have been saying, oh, my slope's zero. So if those are your only numbers, you must be either increasing or decreasing. So step number four, we test a point in each of those intervals. It's so much like a sign analysis test. Only you do it in the first derivative. And that's going to tell you because the first derivative gives you increase or decreasing. If you're positive here, are you increasing or decreasing? Increasing. increasing. If you're negative here, what are you? Decreasing. Yeah. So, and if it changes, you know you have a max or a min. If it doesn't change, you know you don't have a max or a min. Does that make sense to you? That's our whole idea. So for each interval, you're going to plug in a number into f prime of x. I'll say it this way. Find the sine of each interval each interval by plugging a value into f prime of x. Not f of x, that'll give you points. We want slopes. slopes. Why? Because this will tell you increasing or decreasing. That's what we're looking for. Some of you are zoning out. You've got to be with me on this stuff. Because this tells you increasing and decreasing. Uh, I only have two examples because this is pretty much self-explanatory. I mean, you've done all this stuff. You've taken first derivatives, right? That was what this whole class was until this point. You know how to set the equal to zero. That's algebra. You know how to plug numbers in. That's algebra. So uh, that's it. I'll show you a couple of them, but really the idea is the same for all of it. Just be aware that what I told you about rational functions still stays the same. To find critical numbers for your first derivative, uh, you, the zero, when you said equal to zero, just look at the numerator. Now, what we are going to discover is that you also have to use those denominator numbers for, for your tables. We'll get there later on. I'll show you why that, that is the way it is. Uh, but, I'll, you know, maybe I'll show you now. I think I might have one of those examples. Uh, but you also have to use those for your, your first derivative and second derivative test because things can happen there. For instance, um, if you have an asymptote, sometimes functions look like this, right? See how that changes from increasing to decreasing? But that number's not going to show, might not show up on a first derivative test. So you'd have to put any places where you're undefined from your original function 
on that because you could change from increasing and decreasing there. So we'll also be doing that. So look for critical numbers. Uh, maybe I'll make a little side note here. Also put any undefined values. So basically asymptotes. Put any asymptotes. We're going to do the first derivative test here. So first thing, uh, what are we going to do for our first derivative test? Why don't you tell me? Do it. I got to warn you, I will warn you, some of the ones in the homework, they're worst derivatives, of course. I don't have the time to do expansive just derivatives. I've already done that in this class. That was for the first chapters, all right? But the ideas are the same, okay? Uh, if you need more help on those derivatives, you come and see me, check out the previous videos again, make sure you know how to take those. Uh, what are we going to get for our derivative? And what do you do with that? And what do you do with that? Factor the 3, factor x squared minus 1, add the 3, divide by 3, take a square root with plus and minus. I think we've seen this like three times in this class actually. x equals 1 and negative 1. You okay with the 1 and the negative 1? Hey, quick question. Are there any other points that would make this undefined? Any denominators? That's what we're really looking for, any denominators, okay? That would give us asymptotes. So if there's no denominators, then those are the only two points I'm going to have in my first derivative test. Here's how you make it up. You're going to put f prime of x. You're going to make this line slightly <coughs> below f prime of x. It doesn't go right after, it goes slightly below it. And the reason is, I'm going to give you another piece for down here. So we're going to fill out the second piece in the next section. On the top, this works for your f prime of x. You're going to put your critical numbers. There's only two of them, so we make both numbers. What are my two numbers? They have to go in order. Would you agree that those are the two points where my slope is equal to zero? Yep. Everywhere else, this is also continuous everywhere, you're either going to be increasing or decreasing. How we find that out, we take a number here and we plug it in. Where am I going to plug in a number here? To the function or to the first derivative? First derivative. First derivative. In this case, the first derivative. That's why I have a first derivative right there, right? That says I'm talking about increasing and decreasing. Why don't you do that? Pick an easy number. Pick like negative two. Plug it into your first derivative. So. If I were to do this off to the side, I'd do like, okay, I'm plugging in f prime of negative 2. This one, I definitely would pick 0. This one, I'd probably pick f prime of 2. And I would plug those things in, and I don't care about the actual number. I care whether it's a positive number or a negative number. That's what's telling me what to do here. So plug in negative 2. If I plug in negative 2, I get, I don't know, something big minus something small. Positive. You get positive 9, right? I don't care about 9. I care whether it's positive or negative. That's the key. Plug in 0. I get 0 minus 3. What's that? Negative. Negative. Don't care about what, what the value is, just positive or negative. How about 2? Positive. Positive. What's my function going to be doing in this interval? Increasing or decreasing? Increasing. Why would you say that? Slope, this is a slope, right? You plugged in a point. This is the only places where the slope could possibly change, right? That's it, because you found the zero.